The death of an inmate inside Adams County Jail on Christmas Eve would have likely gone unnoticed had we not obtained a video of what happened right before. We want to warn you, this story does include body camera video of his final moments. It appears jail staff violated their own policies in the minutes leading up to Arthur Royball's death. Here's investigative reporter Chris Vanderveen. He was clearly in distress and they offered no help to him at all. A few minutes into a face down, strapped down with strength. We're gonna leave him low and then walk. Him. The incomprehensible ramblings of a mentally ill man transformed into words easy to understand. Don't let him get me. Don't let him get me. Arthur Royball would not survive the morning. Just a part of my soul is gone. His brother Adam Hernandez will spend the rest of his life wondering why. I'm pretty tough as well, so it's, I process things a lot slower. What he does now know is this, Adams County's own policy could have prevented it. Not only do the sheriffs need to be trained again, but the, the nurses need to be retrained again. Why it took a month for Adams County to fulfill our open records request on prone or face down restraint, we cannot say. But when it finally responded, we discovered this policy. Restrained inmates shall not be placed face down or in a position that inhibits breathing. And yet, face down. <laughs> this still happened Christmas Eve morning. If you have a policy, you must educate your employees on the policy. Melissa Becker is a forensic nurse and legal nurse consultant. When she watched the video at our request, Roy Bull. Hey, buddy. she noticed its beginning, a naked and disturbed Roy Ball inside his cell a problem all jail staff should know well. Who is in an obvious mental health crisis. Do you want to plan ahead and get the restraint chair? She says that plan to transport him to a medical bay made sense. A chair would have kept him upright. But that's not what they did. I can't! Oh, right. Too good! I'm thinking, here we go again. What have people not learned? What rock are you living under in this era of George Floyd and not get how wrong this is? Yes, George Floyd, who died handcuffed, prone, and unable to properly breathe in 2020. Our three-year investigation has found more than 130 others, a list that now includes Arthur Royball. I don't understand how all those people in that room didn't know to to turn him over. State Representative Judy Amabile also watched the video we obtained. She calls it, quote, shocking. She says the state's newly formed Jail Standards Commission needs to take a close look at this case. They're supposed to be setting standards for jail operations so that things like this don't happen. Colorado's prisons prohibit prone restraint, same for the state's mental health hospital, but jails remain subject to their own rules, even the rules Face down. <laughs> they appear unable to follow. It's disgusting. Hernandez knows his brother battled demons almost as much as he battled the law. He says it shouldn't matter. His brother needed help that day. And he died face down, strapped down to a gurney. Even though you're a criminal, you're still a human being. He just went town maybe Thursday. Yeah. yeah, go ahead and start CPR. Okay, those deputies remain on the job. No discipline has been handed out. The county says it's waiting on the results of the autopsy that might not be finalized until April. We asked for the sheriff for an interview and county commissioners. All of them have declined. The family is now considering a lawsuit. When you talk about this video we obtained, how does that come about? State law. Mm -hmm. State law changed a couple of years ago in terms of getting body cameras and making them available to the public shortly thereafter. We would not see this body camera a month and a half after the death of Arthur Royball were it not for that state law change. And if it were it not for that state law change, we might not see this body camera for two years. Wow, and I think in this piece, maybe so more than any of your others on this topic, you're starting to see the frustration start to bubble up in public safety and law enforcement circles of just like, why does this keep happening? Because again, we've known, we know, we know. We, we know, know better. This happened at the end of 2022. There have been years and years and years of this coverage. Why did this happen in 2022? Question. That is the question. Chris, thank you. That's right. You bet. All right, thank you.
Extremely cold temperatures are here. It was a record cold morning at DIA. I think you probably figured that out. We reached a whopping negative 11 degrees, breaking the old daily record of negative 7. And it really hasn't warmed up much throughout the day. Denver is sitting at a measly 1 degree right now. In fact, the mountains are warmer than the metro area. Danielle Grant's going to be joining us in a bit to tell us when the warm up begins. Denver school leaders are returning to conversations about possibly closing schools due to declining enrollment. This time around, they'll have a different process for decision making and participation from the school communities. Nine News reporter Jennifer Meckles has been following this since they kicked the can down the road the first time, <laughs> and now they're, they're back where they started, Jenny. Here we are again. Uh, for starters, we now have a new list of 15 schools that they are talking about. I want to be very clear here. None of these are recommended for closure today. At tonight's school board meeting, we learned, though, just how bad some of the numbers are at these schools. Most of these 15 schools, by the way, were part of previous closer, closure conversations. Everybody has less than 215 students. Students. Three are as bad as it gets, fewer than 120 students. And now that we are in school choice season, barely any kids enrolled for next year. Denver Discovery School, Math and Science Leadership Academy, and Fairview Elementary all have fewer than 10 kids signed up for their entry level classes next year, either sixth grade coming in or kindergarten coming in, which is even less than the district projected. Clearly, we cannot function with those numbers. So what we will do is engage immediately with those communities to come up with solutions. And solutions can be um, another unification effort, meaning that would be my recommendation, or it can be something more creative. No kindergarten, no sixth grade, and that would be a slower way of uh, the school ultimately closing. And that has not been decided. I want to make sure that that's clear. Uh, but those are the schools that we will immediately engage in. And that is the new part of the process here. Last fall, the school board voted down the superintendent's recommended closures, claiming his team did not engage with the community enough. So now Marrero says it's time to sit down and brainstorm with the families at those three smallest schools immediately. And the board seemed much more receptive tonight to this conversation compared to last fall. We are at a crossroads with these three schools, and uh, I think I'm in a much different position um, than I was a few months ago with these three. Um, I, I would love to have longer conversations on the others, but I, I don't see where we can turn around. And um, I think that there's a, a tough decision we have to make, and I think that we need to make it sooner um, instead of dragging on uncertainty for, this, for these three communities. Closing schools is not a popular move, and the district was really careful to say tonight that nobody is on a closure list today. But guys, there really isn't a good solution here, and other districts, they're going through the same thing. And I'm sure, Jenny, that some of these school communities would say, well, you marked us for closure, so sure. now that's why no families are choicing in here. But at the end of the day, I mean, how many families choicing in? Like less than 10 for the for the incoming classes on yeah. three of these schools, six, seven, give or take. Yeah. So, so few kids in an incoming class. Not sustainable. All right, Jenny, thank you. A jury says Excel Energy should pay millions to the family of a woman killed in an explosion at her retirement community. Back in 2018, contractors working at Heather Gardens in Aurora hit a gas line. A little more than an hour later, Carol Ross's townhome exploded. The 82-year-old died. Her family sued Excel, which owned the gas line, and Comcast, whose contractors caused the explosion. They claimed Excel was negligent for not dealing with the gas leak faster and not stepping in when crews hit the line in the weeks before. The attorney for the Ross family says today a jury awarded $32 million to the family. They think Excel will be responsible for $3 million of that when the appeals are done. The district attorney in Arapahoe County is going to have to decide if an Aurora police officer should face charges for using force on the job. CBI investigated and handed it over to prosecutors today. Aurora police released body camera video of what happened. Niners reporter Kelly Rinke took it to a use of force expert. From last August, body camera video shows an Aurora police officer walking a suspect out of a hospital. The man is handcuffed when the officer takes him to the ground. I didn't do anything. You did. You just tried to oh. pull my arm. The reality is I didn't see anything wrong with what transpired. Um, you see that he's got a wrist lock on him and it's called the escort position. It's, it's exactly right. It, it was everything was perfect to the T. David Thomas was a police officer for decades and he's now an expert on training and use of force in Florida. He's paying attention to this angle. When you literally can see the subject take his arm 
the arms and lock them out and push them so they pull his arms stiffen completely up. Thomas believes the officer had no choice but to take the man to the ground. And when your hand is down there, we always teach officers not to grab people by the handcuffs because what happens is suspects like to take and grate those cuffs, the chains of the cuffs together and officers have lost their fingers. CBI finished its investigation and now the district attorney will decide if the officer will face charges. I, I just, I don't see how you do that. Um, he had the right to take him to the ground. Now this incident happened in mid-August of last year, but it wasn't reviewed until January, which is five months later. APD said one of the reasons was the force investigation unit's caseload. The department said it's made some changes to avoid months long delays of use of force investigations in the future. Let's take away some uncertainty for all involved. Kelly, thank you. And a, de a deputy got an award for getting hurt as he shot a man at point blank range in a school pickup line. The Postal Service blames staff shortages for problems in mountain towns. Our state senators say the post office would have more workers if they didn't ghost on their applicants. <laughs> it's another chilly night here in the Nine Backyard, but we are slowly climbing out of the deep freeze. Wait until you see my weekend forecast. It's looking good. We'll see you on the other side of this break.